she's fit as a fiddle. Oh, shall I take her to nursery today? Might as well, it's been nine days. Not really worth her taking the week off, was it? Well, it's better to be safe than sorry, and anyway, it's not like she's going to fall behind in the curriculum. Oh, Paul, Sawyer. Oh, sorry. Are you coming up in a rash? That toast is not for you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this song. Oh, me too. Who is it? <laughs> oh. Thanks. That cardi really suits you. It's too bright for work. No. Anyway, why can't a single girl get notice? Ooh, get you ring. <laughs> it's like you're the one coming down with something. I think I need to try a new remedy for my hay fever. Off you go, little dove. Fly away. Oh. oh. Not swimming day, is it? Library book. Oh, right. So, what should I tell him at the nursery? Oh, nothing. Just say I kept her at home for a bit of mother daughter bonding. Oh, thank you. I might need a few of these this morning. Good weekend, then. Oh, oh it was the best. Um, my jet-setting baby brother's back from his travels, so we went a bit wild catching up. How wild? Oh. Well, we ended up at the exchange and we were dancing all night and JJ just kept kicking on till they threw us out. <laughs> what time to close? Oh, I don't know. Silly o'clock. Oh. Let's check it out. I haven't been there before. I thought it was a gay club. No, don't think so. Well, they let me in anyway. Maybe they thought you were in drag. <laughs> Charming. What about you, Arch? Any trouble at the door? Dingo! Not my scene. Right, well, uh, let be off. Here's the house call list. The first one seems rather urgent. Well, um, I'll just be a minute. In your own time, Dr Bell. All right, I'm on my way. OK, have a good day, darling. Oh, she's uh, fine. Um, Una had no work on last week, so she kept her home for a bit of mother-daughter bonding. Yeah, she did ring. Uh -huh. It's lovely for Holly to spend time at home. All my kids were home until they started infants. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I uh, I better make tracks. I've got a meeting in half an hour, so... Uh... Okay. Have a good day, then. So... Oh, um, shall I take Holly's library bag? So... <laughs> See you. Bye. See you this afternoon. Hello, I'm Una Brandt. I rang earlier and you said you could squeeze me onto Dr Woodson's list this morning. Oh, yes, I said there would be quite a wait. Um, Dr Granger has an available space, if you prefer. Dr Woodson's the only GP homeopath at this practice, isn't she? At the last count, we only had the one. Excuse me. <clears throat> Good morning, Mill Health Centre. I'll wait for Dr Woodson. Yes, yes, you're right to be concerned. I saw enough of it in my day, too. Where did you say you were? Uh -huh. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. What's this? Personal delivery. <laughs> They'll look after me down that cafe. Now I'm chained to this desk. <laughs> I've got some coffee. And I got you something special. Open it. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh, really? It's beautiful. It, it looks too good to eat. You said you were hungry. What do I need to say to get champagne? <laughs> Look, I just wanted to say thank you for helping me and for letting me stay. Oh, Ruth, come here. <laughs> Us girls need to stick together. <laughs> Listen, you know you're welcome to stay with me as long as you need to find your own place. But we wanted to go back and sort out your things. You need to make it clear to Davy that you've left for good this time. <laughs> mm, that tastes fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes with homeopathic remedies, you have to try a few different ones before you get it right. So try these and see how you get on. Um, if your hay fever does become acute, 
Uh, some of the newer conventional medicines on the market are kinder than the older ones. They're less likely to make you drowsy. Thanks. But I'll try these first. OK, good. Um, how's Holly getting on? She's fine. She's well. Have you thought any more about bringing her in for vaccinations? I have, and I'm happy with the choices I've made. OK, I'm just um, concerned that Holly is at risk without them. But what about the risks from the vaccines? From what I've read, autism from MMR is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, any connections between uh, the MMR jab and autism have been resoundingly discredited. The medical establishment has a vested interest in discrediting studies that oppose their practice. OK, well, they stopped giving the MMR jab completely in Japan for a number of years and the rate of autism was unchanged. I'd say that's uh, quite conclusive. <laughs> and what about the other immunisations that Holly's due her whooping cough, diphtheria? Holly needs to get these childhood diseases, fight them and overcome them. That way she'll develop a healthy immune system. Yeah, but it's most likely that the children around her will have been immunised, so she's not going to get them, is she? This is a problem with mass immunisation. The nanny state decides it's easier to treat the community, not the individual, and my choice ends up being compromised. The NHS might mistake parental responsibility with compliancy, but I don't. This is, um, my little girl, Bracken. She's a cutie. She's three. And she's had all her immunisations, including the MMR. Look, why don't you and I have a look on the uh, British Association of Homeopaths website together? And um, I think you'll find that they support immunisations. Hey, do you know what? I think you might be right. If these are coplic spots, then... Yeah, it's measles. Oh, it's strange, I've never seen it before. Before your time, Doctor. Mm. I saw it five times with my children. Have these two had their MMR jobs? I'm pretty sure Olivia has. I couldn't say with Holly. Not all the parents keep us up to date. Uh, they are both listed with the mill, though. OK, well, I'll check. Um, and I'll arrange for some oral swabs to confirm that it is measles. The parents will be sent a kit. They just have to follow the instructions and send it back to the lab. It's pretty simple. But if they've got any questions, they should give us a call. Well, Olivia's mum's on her way now, uh, and I've left messages with Holly's parents. Yeah. Olivia hasn't got the spots, so they may not have the same thing. Anyway, we should isolate the children and let the parents know. Good thinking. Yeah, I can't think of anything else those spots could be, so I think we should treat it as measles. I think that's wise. I'll contact the Health Protection Unit and I'll dig out those records for you. Have you isolated both the children? Yeah, yeah, of course. Can't be too careful. Is there a rash? It usually starts behind the ears and then it spreads to the head and the neck. No, I didn't see anything. Well, it usually takes a few days to come out and then they feel really sick. I saw a lot of it on the wards in my day. Oh, oh, OK. Um, so is there anything else you think I should do? No, you seem to have everything under control, Dr Bell. Thanks, Vivian. Um, I'll be back at the mill soon. I'll see you shortly. Bye. just been called out to a nursery where she's seen two suspected cases of measles. One of the children, Holly Brandt, is one of your patients, I believe, Dr Woodson. Uh, yes, I saw her mother this morning. Holly Brandt has no immunisations whatsoever. All there is is a hotchpotch list of which doctor remedies prescribed by you. When I was a girl, my friend next door got polio and she's been in a wheelchair all her life. <sighs> People don't know how good they've got it. They realise that all these childhood diseases which people died from are now preventable. Well, they may not, but I do. And if you'd bothered to look a little closer before charging in here, accusing me of sins against your generation, you'd have seen in my notes, repeatedly documented, the parents' refusal to immunise the child against my advice. What's wrong? Um, <clears throat> just a misunderstanding between myself and Dr Woodson. Oh, if you'll excuse me. 
That's probably some out-of-date disease uh, making a comeback due to feeble-minded complementary thinking. A patient of mine, a four-year-old, uh, may have measles. Really? I've not seen a case of measles for years. No, me either. I'm just wondering where she might have caught it. I just diagnosed my first case of measles. Really? Yeah, well, it's not been confirmed yet, but the HPU are following it up, so we'll just have to wait and see. Look, Archie, I'm really sorry about the weekend. I should have called you. We could all have gone out together. It's just it was a bit spur of the moment, you know. Oh, it's all right. I mean, you had some catching up to do. Yeah, but I want you to get to know JJ. You'd like each other. Well, after meeting your parents, I'm not sure I'd be a hit with any of your family. <laughs> well, JJ's different. And, you know, you seemed to get on well the other night. Yeah, well, I don't know, look, maybe we can go out for a drink or something. Yeah, or come over for dinner. JJ's an amazing cook. I could quite get used to him staying with me, actually. But he's not going to your parents' place? No, well, they're away. He doesn't want to be rattling around that big old house on his own. He'd get lonely. Why? Are you uh, worried he's going to cramp your style? Ah, a little. <laughs> no, but seriously, when are you going to get the audit done? It's got to be in next week. Yeah, well, I've got the rest of the afternoon free, so I'll probably get it finished today. Yeah, there's a lot of work involved in getting the data from those patient files, you know. I know. I'm the one who got through med school. Uh, all right, fair enough. I just, you know, get worried. I know how uh, you can get distracted. Mm. Well, who's distracting me now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, um, it's Dr Woodson here, is that Una? Yes, it is. Una, um, I heard that Holly's unwell. A colleague of mine saw her this morning and um, I just thought I'd give you a call, see how she's getting on. Oh, well, her temperature's up and she's got a cough, but she's sleeping peacefully enough at the moment. OK, um, but as you know, we're concerned that it may be measles, so if she's developed any further symptoms, we well, might be able to confirm the diagnosis. I was just wondering if you'd like a home visit. No. That won't be necessary. The testing kit should arrive tomorrow and uh, I'll keep her isolated until we know. Right, OK. Um, have you got any idea where she might have caught it? No. No idea. She's not been to visit any relatives or, you know, cousins, played with anyone outside a circle of friends? No. She probably just picked it up at childcare. You know, there's, sometimes there's so many bugs going around in there, it's like a laboratory Petri dish. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. I mean, it may not be measles at all, so... Well, let's hope... Because then she'll have immunity. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, do call me if she gets any worse, though, won't you? I will. And yeah, I'm not too worried. I had it as a child and it was pretty mild. But thanks for the call. Goodbye, Dr Woodson. Oh, you look busy. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my head around this lithium audit. What can I help? Um, that's kind, but I think I just need to get stuck into it. All right, well, if you need a hand with the notifiable diseases form, just let me know. Oh, OK, but um, Vivian seems to have it all under control, actually. Well, good old Vivian. Um, I'll deal with any uh, follow-up visits, though, because I've already spoken to Holly's mum. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Um, and well done on diagnosing measles, you know. We don't see many cases of that these days, so... Thank you. Uh, well, aren't we the golden girl? Well, I won't be with Nick if I don't get this lithium audit finished. You know, it's taking forever to extract the data from all these different files. Well, it's lucky for you that I have a solution. Mm -hmm. Does your bro play football? Um, yeah, sure. JJ's up for anything. Cool. Well, it's five aside tomorrow. So I thought you could come along, we get a bit of bloke-to-bloke -bloke time, and then you're free to do your work. Ah, oh, you're a genius. Then you know that, don't you? I do. Yeah, I'm sure I love it. In fact, I'll ask him now. I'm back to meet him for lunch. Gotta go, gotta go. Hi. You're home early. How's Holly? OK. Well, she's sick, but you know that. Olivia's mum just rang me, and she's really worried. I didn't know there were such serious complications with measles, did you? They're very rare. And Holly's doing really well. She's been sleeping all afternoon. Yeah, but what if she gets worse and it's our fault? She won't. She's strong. And it's good that she's caught it now. It's what we wanted. It's what you wanted. What? 
Are you telling me you think she should have had the MMR? No, of course not. I'm worried about the side effects too. But I didn't want her to get measles either. I just didn't think she would, I suppose. Oh, Paul, don't be fickle. You can't have it both ways. If we'd done nothing, Holly would be at a greater risk later in life. What if she wants to go off to Africa for her gap year? But what if she deteriorates now? This age is the safest time for Holly to catch measles. It's the right time in her natural cycle. OK, but let's get Dr Woodson out to see her. You're panicking. Trust me. There's nothing to worry about. <sighs> Could be coincidental. See, one week I am advocating immunisations. The next week her daughter has contracted a disease that we haven't seen in Leatherbridge for years. So what exactly are you accusing her of? Oh, I don't know. Suspicious timing and evasive phone manner. <laughs> well, if Holly had been in direct contact with measles, then we could report it. But as the mother is denying it, it is jumping the gun a bit. Yeah, I'm just concerned that we're wasting valuable time. You know, the Health Protection Unit could be following up on all the children that Holly's had contact with. Yeah, well, it's not our job to play detective, but I'll tell you what. I do actually have a friend in the lab, so I'll give them a call, make sure there are no delays about the results coming back to us. And then if it's confirmed, we can ring the HPU, tell them about your suspicions, how's that? That'd be great, thank you. OK. I ordered you a sandwich as well. Mmm, this is what I really need. Hair of the dog. You too, I see. Uh, no, mine's virgin. You wet blanket. <laughs> Yeah, well, as I discovered at the weekend, there is absolutely no point trying to keep up with you. <laughs> Plus, I've, uh, I've got this project that I've been ignoring. Naughty doctor. Hmm. Yes, but Archie, resourceful man that he is, has come up with a plan to take you off my hands for the evening so I can get on with my work. And you two can get to know each other. What does he have in mind? Game of five-a-side. <laughs> Football. <laughs> it's not... Quite the male bonding experience I expected from your hemp wearing tree hugger of a boyfriend. Um, Archie's no sissy, right? He's just different to the other guys I've been out with. You know, he's he's thoughtful and kind and responsible and he's involved in my life. And he actually cares about my interests and he takes me seriously. Yes, he's, he's a good man. And he's very sexy. <laughs> really, big sister. <laughs> I got the impression he was a bit straight laced. Yeah, but that's why it's so much fun, loosening him up. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> no. Hey, you're awake now. How are you feeling, sweetie? You're burning up. I know you've still got two patients to see, but Paul Brandt has called. He'd like a home visit. Oh, is Holly OK? I don't think it's anything serious. I can move your patients to Dr Westlist if you'd like to attend. Uh, yes, I would. You got anything you'd like to say? No. I'll tell them you won't be long. Where are all the students? In class? Hmm, suspicious. I found these boxes. I thought it might be useful to put your stuff in this evening. Thanks. So I'll leave them on here so we don't forget them. Good. OK. Sorry to have brought you out here. Paul was worried. Oh, that's perfectly all right. It's important to keep an eye on Holly. Can I get you a cup of tea? That'd be lovely, but I'd like to see Holly first. I'll take you up. Why did you ask her to stay for tea? I want to make sure I'm well informed. The horse has bolted, Paul. And now Dr Woodson's going to grill us about how Holly caught it. Oh, you're ashamed of that now? We have not done anything illegal. I'm not ashamed, but... Yes. I wish we hadn't sent Holly back to nursery. Well, I wish you'd never got us into this at all. We... Holly's temperature is high, and with her cough and the coplic spots, I think it's, it's very likely that it's measles. 
course it's measles. We don't know that for sure. All right, well, um, let's just say it's measles for now, in which case we need to be alert to any possible complications. Such as? Such as uh, breathing difficulties, chest pain, abdominal pain, uh, severe headaches, confusion. All of these indicate possible secondary problems such as pneumonia or meningitis, but they're very rare, so please don't panic. We just, you know, need to be vigilant. Is that serious? Yes, so if Holly shows any of these symptoms, you need to get to hospital as quickly. I had no idea measles could be this dangerous. Well, this is why it's been such a priority to eliminate it. The reason we wanted to know where Holly might have caught it was to limit the contagion to any younger, more vulnerable children. I mean, do you know where Holly may have come in contact with measles? Oh, we know exactly where she caught it, don't we, Una? I'm sorry, you're on your own on this one. Una? I took her to a measles party. A measles party? There were lots of other children there. There are organisations on the web linking parents up all over the country. They were the done thing in the 50s and 60s. My mother took my older sister to a rubella party. But there's no need these days, so why take the risk? Last time I went to see you, you told me about that teenager who died of measles last year. And, well, you got me worried about the greater risk Starley later in her life. I was recommending a vaccination, not a disease party. But I had the same result. Now she won't get it as an adult. And why on earth did you put her back into childcare? At the nursery, there are children that would be too young to have even had the MMR. I thought she was over the incubation period. I kept her at home for a week, but she didn't even have a temperature after nine days. Honestly, I, I just thought she hadn't caught it. Have you any idea how dangerous measles can be to a baby? The mortality rate is really quite high. I should have kept her at home longer. Well, I'm going to need a list of all the people that were at the party. The Health Protection Unit will want to contact them as soon as possible. Will you tell them what I've done? Well, I'll have to. So the list. Now, please. She's a little better. Good. I can't believe it when I put Holly in danger like this. Well, you knew about it as well, didn't you? Yeah, but I thought she knew what she was talking about. I trusted her judgment. Holly's well-being is also your responsibility. I've just spoken to Olivia's mum. It seems like her temperature's down and she's on the mend. Good. Well, Olivia's had her MMR jab, so it's most likely some other bug. Let's hope so. And I've uh, got that list for you. Thank you. Children that have been in contact with an infected child in the last three days can benefit from the MMR jab. Oh, good Holly. Uh, no, no, not now. She could still benefit from the other vaccinations when she's recovered. Look, there's, there's so much bogus information on the web, it's hard not to panic. It doesn't help that the media are happy to whip up a frenzy around any medical study where there's a hint of controversy. I do understand why you're looking for what seem like simpler and more natural solutions. But maybe we threw the baby out with the bathwater? I think so, yes. Or well, perhaps I'll bring Holly into the mill in the next couple of weeks and just check out what immunisations you got available. Good. Should we take your temperature, Holly? Hello, Holly. What do you think, Una? OK. Well, it might be less complicated. Look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have blamed you. You do rely on me to make the hard decisions. I know, I know and I shouldn't. Two heads are better than one. All right. Look into it again. OK, good. Oh, hi. Got your message. I've rung the HPU and um, they say that they've been hearing about these measles parties as well, but this is the first one on our patch. Well, that's a distinction we could have done with that. Um, here's the RSVP list of all the foolish parents. Great, I'll fax that over to them. Oh, and well done, by the way, for getting the parents to own up. Well, and fingers crossed, I've also got them to agree to give Holly her vaccinations. But let's not tell Vivian, eh? Hey?
Maybe we should come back later when I know he'll be out. Well, can you see his van? No, but he might come back. Ruth, you've already confronted him. Davy knows that it's over. Yeah. He does. Look. Do you want me to come in with you? Looks like we won't be needing the boxes after all. Says I can have the place. Are you okay? Yeah. It's over. I'm so glad you're here. Shh. <laughs> Uniform report my body out by drawer's way. And what's this about? Please. I've got the afternoon off, and you have no patience this afternoon. So it seemed a shame not to take advantage. Michelle, Julia, meet JJ. You found his killer. It's too much weed, not enough puff. You know what? Next time you play, get a couple of your squash balls and shove them down your pants. There's conflict brewing between Dr Slow and his newest colleague next on BBC One Scotland in Diagnosis Murder. <laughs>